I don't know. I guess I guess I've sort of never. I mean, I'm just kind of wired that way to begin with. Um, and uh, you know, I grew up. I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota. Very very homogenous. You know, went to went to Catholic school. Like very little racial diversity or or uh, or religious diversity. And I went to college, and you know, I went to Harvard, and it's like totally different. You know, it's yeah. like the most diverse place in the world, and which is great. I mean, this is back in the '90s, and um, so you know, like I've always been a fan of conversation and getting to know people and talking and kind of like deep. I mean, that sort of deep conversations, trying to learn, and it's just always interests me. And so I think that you know, I've come to a point now. I mean, I'm in my mid forties. Like I, I, I know why I believe what I believe. Uh, I, I'm always open to other viewpoints. Um, but um, like I said, I think I've, I think I've thought about my, my beliefs a lot. And so I'm pretty convicted in them. So, you know, if Fox news calls, I go on Fox news, I've been on CNN. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk anywhere. I, I, I do think that I am a, it might be sort of a dying breed, but someone who does appreciate uh, spirited discussion with, with people who believe things differently without taking it personally. And I, I do think not taking things personally was developed through sports and playing football particularly because in football, you, you better have really, you better have skin like an armadillo, as we used to say, <laughs> not, not like a baby rabbit because the way football coaches talk, you know, they don't have time to, to ask you about your feelings and make sure you're okay. Uh, they're going to tell you the most direct way, sometimes in a colorful way, uh, yeah. what they need, what they need you to do or what they need you to do differently. And so um, that's something that, that certainly, cultivated during my 15 years in the NFL. Yeah, no, listen, I, I've always appreciated the spirit and the language of coaches because it is. It, the good ones, they're direct, they're to the point. You know they care about you, but you're not getting all touchy and, and you know, defensive based on how they say it. Yeah, I was lucky. You know, I played for four years for John Hall in Baltimore, who's you know, probably the best coach I've ever been around. I mean, as far as a leader, you know, head yeah. coach, leadership. And uh, he used to always say, we, we attack problems, not people. So don't, don't take it personally. And, and I mean, he get after you, you know, everyone knows his brother, Jim, like Jim's, Jim's a little crazy, right? <laughs> John's, John's getting at him too now. John, John can get after you. Um, but, uh, but, but off the field or, you know, away from out of the meeting, you know, um, really good at building, building relationships with people, like not doing it just because, oh, I got to do it. I'm the coach, but doing it because he really does care about you as a person and, and can meet people where they are. And so, uh, but he always said, yeah, attack problems, not people. And, and I need to remember that. I mean, I've been retired for almost eight years now. I need to remember with my family or with people that I deal with in business that not everybody can kind of handle or is used to the direct, <laughs> direct conversation or direct uh, speak that sometimes as, as athletes we become accustomed to. Yeah. Has that been tough for you coming out of the league? I mean, coming out of pro sports, uh, you're used to a certain, you know, way or certain language, certain tonality i think the two things that were hard was one you know it kind of used to be like geez if, if i just get up early and get to the facility i know that everything's going to be scheduled and laid out for me and i just have to go like attack it when i retired i remember thinking like well i don't have to do anything <laughs> so now what do i have to do right like have to kind of that that structure you miss because when you have that structure and when you go to work for a Wednesday or Thursday or Friday practice in the NFL, when you left the facility at five, six o'clock, you could look back and say, man, got a lot of stuff done today. Yeah. Like individually and as a group, we accomplished a lot. You know, that feels good versus um, I, did, I did a two-year stint at the NFL league office and, uh, you know, kind of corporate America. And a lot of days I'd leave and I'd say, what can I point to and say that I actually got done? You know, it's a, yeah. it's a lot of meetings and just kind of the, the speed of everything um, in big business, particularly, it just takes so long. Right. And, and, you know, kind of figured out that that's, that's not really how I'm wired. It's more so towards, uh, you know, working within a small team where, where, where everybody's kind of willing to do whatever it takes. There's no job above or below anybody, but we've all got roles and, yep. and we're all going to, just, you know, just, just attack, attack every day with, with enthusiasm and, and, and try to, you know, pardon the, pardon the pun, but advance the ball down the field. Yeah, no, listen, I think that's the best part about pro sports is when you come in, you know, exactly, you know, what time to get there. There's a, there's an ending time and everything in between, you know, where to go, who's going to be, you know, leading that session. And when you come out into the real world, 
you have to create that for yourself or else you scramble. So I see it a ton with, with a lot of my former players. You, know, you have to almost still coach them through the process of exiting the league. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it, yeah, it's, it's a huge adjustment. And yeah, I would say probably the one mistake I made when I retired was I just felt like I got to dive into something. Looking back, I should have probably just taken six months and done nothing, you know, but I jumped, I was like, I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah, I was like working out and I'm like, well, I'm 310. I don't need to be 310 pounds anymore. Let me see if I can get down to, you know, two something, which I did, you know, I had lost, I got down to like 220. Um, uh, I, I wrote a book, you know, I was just like, I, cause I almost felt like maybe I was kind of scared a little bit of, yeah. I, I kind of liken it to that. If you've seen Shawshank Redemption, when, uh, when uh, red gets, gets let out of jail and you know, he doesn't know what to do. Right. And he, he ends, he ends up killing himself, but it's like, he doesn't have that, that structure in, in place. And so I think I was afraid of that a little bit and just wanted to, to stay busy because you're just used to, to working and, and achieving and getting all this, all this stuff done all the time. Um, but you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's the way it was. We, yeah. I, I've got a lot of <laughs> regrets, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know, in, in sports team, whatever sports you're talking about, when you want to talk about a group of individuals kind of all on the same page aligned, you know, for the same goal, being all in like that doesn't exist in a lot of environments outside of sports companies talk about it all the time, but, wow. but, but, yep. it's, but it's not true. Yeah, it's not, it's not true at all. Actually, you know, um, I think what's so interesting about sports is you have, like you said, you have guys from all different religious backgrounds, skin color, upbringing, you know, financial backgrounds, and everybody plays together. And if there's an issue, you know, you solve it right there, and then it diffuses, and you move on with your business. So a lot of the, the things that we hear today that are, you know, issues, I don't find them to be issues in a lot of clubhouses. Oh. Oh, exactly. Like we never had one day of sensitivity training, you know, in the yeah. NFL, but you got black guys, white guys, brown guys, North, you know, Christians, Jew, whatever. It was just yeah. like, didn't matter. Like it just, it was just a non-issue. I mean, it never, it never came up. And yeah. um, it's, it's, it, that's, it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting because I think as funny as it sounds, I think, I think the world could, could probably learn a lot from, I mean, I say football players, but athletes, athletes in general. And, and what that what that clubhouse culture is like? Yeah, no, I talk about I, I would see guys, you know, duke it out on the field, have issues, yeah. go right into and and then be having a din dinner together. It, it's like yeah. you said earlier, it was nothing was personal. It was just there was an issue, it heated up, and it diffused, and then it's everyone's recommitted to the goal of winning. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think you don't. I mean, I can't say I loved every guy that I played with, but yeah. respected them for sure liked them got along with them in the locker room because that was the, maybe yeah you know, i didn't go out to dinner with every guy that i played with but that's okay you know it didn't it didn't hurt us when we were at work trying to trying to get done what we needed to get done if i could help that guy in some way do his job better which would make us better then of course i would i would do it um yeah the, the not not taking things personally uh huge huge in sports and, and huge in, in any environment i think if you want to if you want to reach your full potential yeah. Matt, what would you say? Like, you know, there's, I feel like there's a tonality out there today that is a little bit softening, even in sports. What are your thoughts on the consequences of that? Mm. Well, uh, it'd be hard to kind of project the consequences from our society. I mean, we know that our kids, and I have eight kids, I got a lot of kids. I think about yeah. kids a lot. You um, got a team, you got a whole they, team over there. Yeah. Yeah. They don't make that resiliency. Um, I mean, and I think that's that's kind of scientifically proven how they measure that. You know, they lack the resiliency, and um, you know, part of that is is just parenting. We don't we don't really let our kids fail anymore. And so, um, I mean, I think the result is that you know, it's, life's going to be life's going to be tough because adversity is going to happen a lot in life. You know, it's not if it's it's when. And so. Um, is as you know is sometimes difficult as it is for a parent or just an adult to watch kids struggle right the struggle is required for for any type of growth um and in the long run in the long run it's good but i think um i think it's it's a great trait to have whether our country you know whether you know god forbid we go to war or just, you know in your life in 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 relationships uh you know marriages and friendships and things like that right there's there's ups and downs and you've got to be able to you got to be able to handle that, right? You got to be able to 
um, to look at situations, to assess, to, to, to take criticism. Um, sometimes it's constructive, sometimes it might not be, but, but you gotta be able to take that and not kind of once, once somebody says something that you don't want to hear, kind of go into your turtle shell and, uh, and want to get away from it. So I think at the end of the day, I mean, for, for kids personally, you're just gonna, um, life's gonna be tough, you know? It's, it's you're not gonna reach your potential, you're gonna be unhappy, um, and, and, and we need to sort of, I think, put that in, in the forefront of our minds as we think about our kids, is that's, that, that's, a, that's a straight, a, a trait that, they, that, they, that they're gonna need to, to develop, um, because, because in the long run, it'll be good for them. Yeah, how, how do you do it with your kids? How do you challenge your kids? you know, in a healthy way where you're still pushing them, you're still tough, but they also know that you care. How do, how do you balance that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, I always, you know, it's, uh, I, I've, I've heard things where, you know, like, like when you're coaching, right. I mean, parenting is, is kind of like coaching. Um, I mean, so I like, yeah, I, I footballize everything. Cause that's yeah, just like, I <laughs> that's it. the world I lived in. Right. But, um, I mean, like, like with, like when coaching, uh, you know, yes, you need to correct, um, or tell them, you know, tell them something that they screwed up. But at the same time, you know, I've heard like for every time you do that, you know, tell them, tell them three positive things too. Um, or I think, you know, sometimes after if, if something, one of my kids does something that I'm really not pleased about, I mean, I will let them know, but at the end of that difficult conversation, I'll also let them know like, Hey, I, you know, I still, I still love you. I still care about you and try to get them to, to kind of draw that, um, to see, to see that difference between like, I'm mad at what you, I'm not necessarily, I'm mad at what you did, right? Like, I hate what you did. I love you, but I hate what you did. And sort of like understand that, you know, I'm coming from a place of love and that uh, I'm, I'm doing this for you in your, in your best interest, but balance it. Not, but I, I do think that we can be, especially if life's busy and if you have a lot of kids and, you know, things are stressful, you can kind of get in the habit of just telling kids when they just screwed up and you see it coaching too. You're just always yelling at players and you got to just, well, it's, you know, after a while, if you're just browbeating people, um, they're, they're, they're not going to listen to what you say and they're going to go into a shell and, uh, and, and they're not going to take what you're saying and, and using, use it to get, to get any better. Um, so I think, the, I think the biggest thing is just balance and making sure, you know, coach them, coach them hard, but love them. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's the trick, right? Because if, if they know that, that you love them, you could coach them even harder. Which I think is you know, absolutely hundred percent. You know, there's, there's a, know that. yeah, I think there's a saying. I think it's an all, but football used to hear it all the time that you know they don't care. Players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And so and so and it and it goes more than just telling them I, I care about you, right? I mean, actions. We all know actions speak louder than words. So so show them show them that as well. And I think the biggest thing we can do with kids these days to show them that you care is I call it waste time with them. Mm. You know, like just just just. Sometimes, I mean, kids, we've got kids over scheduled these days too, but just waste time with them. You know, put, adults need to put their phones down. We always talk about kids. Adults need to put their phones down and just, just be with their kids. Just hang out, you know, ask about their day. Ask them about, you know, I listen to my son all the time. Like, so who's your girlfriend? You know, and he laughs and he's seventh grade. <laughs> he doesn't have a girlfriend or he's not telling me. Right. But just, you know, just, just, just hang out. Just, just joke around. Just, just be with them. Yeah, no, it's that, it's that special time. I think, uh, especially, I mean, I'm sure it's the same where you are, but here in the Northeast where I am in New York, you got a lot of parents, they have their kids and so many activities that the kids don't even know what they like. Yeah. They oftentimes don't like half the activities that they're in. They're so overstretched. They have no time to just chill yeah. and, and talk with their parents. They don't even want to talk with the parents. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, we always want as parents to, this, this, my generation of parenting, it's like, sometimes we think we just got to do all these fantastic things for our kids and take them to Disney world and, yeah. you know, just make like every day, the best day ever. But I can just tell some, sometimes my kids, their favorite times are just before bedtime. We just, you know, I, I, one thing, one thing I've really kind of found gold in is, is telling my kids about my upbringing, you know, telling them funny stories, you know, things that happened to me about their grand, you know, their grandparents, you know, one time I, you know, your grandpa, my dad did this or said this to me. And, and, and I like to tell them too, like things that I screwed up when I was a kid, um, you know, bad, like I almost lit my neighbor's garage on fire. Right. Or the one time when I was in third grade and I peed my pants, I mean, stuff like that. Right. It makes you like relatable. They like to hear, they laugh, um, kind of disarms uh, everybody. And, and um, I think those times 
probably just as, or in a lot of ways, more special than, you know, going to Disney World or, you know, going to rent a pony or something. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more affordable, too. Just spend that time. <laughs> have a good time with your kids, right? It's, that's that the doesn't that's stop. part of family, you know? Exactly. So, so for you, you know, something I, I always like to ask, you know, when you play sports at the highest level, there's, there's obviously a lot of failure in the game naturally. Um, how, how did you deal with failure both personally and from a team standpoint? You know, again, I think I was, I was equipped pretty well to, to deal with failure because as a kid, I loved sports, but I wasn't really good at any of them. So I was kind of used to being like average to low average. I didn't, but I didn't really care. You know, I just, I just loved playing, loved being with my buddies, <clears throat> tried everything. Uh, and then when I was in 10th grade, I was like, well, I tried everything else. I might as well try football. And that's where I kind of felt, found my knack, you know, like kind of this knack for holding on to people and getting in their way and, that's good. Those are good things to talents to have if you're an offensive lineman. And then I, yeah. I love lifting weights. Um, I was, I was never a real strong kid naturally. So I was like, Hey, I can lift weights, become strong. And I love to eat. So it kind of fit me, you know, but, um, but I, so I guess I knew like, you know, when I was a kid, I was used to on the playground, you know, it was a little bit different, but you know, kids are kids and sometimes, you know, kids say things or you play on the playground, you lose, you know, nobody was, when I played, you know, moms weren't bringing juice boxes after every game and there was a score, you know, somebody did win and somebody did lose. So it really didn't affect me uh, a whole lot. And then when I got to the, you know, college and, and the NFL and things got a lot harder and a lot more competitive and I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to make it, right? I didn't know if I was going to make it in college. I don't know if I was going to be able to last. It was, you know, it's a big step up, even at Harvard, which a right. lot of people are like, oh, Harvard, I I didn't even know you guys had a football team. Um, you know, I didn't know. And so I kind of, it's something my dad told me when all the time growing up was, I don't care what grades you get. I don't care if you win or lose, just give it your best effort always. That was it. Best effort always. And I remember I got to college and I was like, man, I don't see how I'm going to be able to play here. You know, I was 18 years old playing against guys that are 22. They're, they're men. I was still a boy. I said, well, I guess all I can do is just give it my best effort. Yep. And, um, you know, so I think with that, that mindset, right, it's kind of oversaid, but, you know, focus on the process, not on the results and just, and just hang in there. Um, and because I wasn't like totally, uh, totally discouraged when I, when I failed early, um, yeah, I just stuck with it. You start to see progress. Um, you know, we all like to see progress. You start to, you start to see, get some hope and, and it just, yeah. and you just kind of, it kind of feeds the machine and you just, you just keep going. No, that's super cool. So did you not play football before 10th grade? You picked up football in 10th grade? Correct. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So that, I mean, that, that in itself is a well, good lesson because, you know, how many parents, you know, as five-year-olds are putting their kids into different programs, thinking the kid's going to go to the NFL or Major League Baseball, and you're like, no, I didn't start till I was in 10th grade and I had a long-standing career in the NFL. That's a great thing about football specifically. There's a lot of positions where, you know, you don't need to, I mean, I live in Minnesota, right? Like if you're not skating by age three, you're not going to be able to play high school hockey in Minnesota. Right. Um, and that's, that's just the way it is. Football's not like that. Right. I mean, I always say anybody can be a lineman or anybody can play defense, right? If you just want to run around and you're not averse to contact, they just put you on the defensive side of the ball and say, go get the ball. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, it is, it is a good lesson. When I talk to parents about youth sports and, uh, you know, I, I do think it's, it's way overdone now. Uh, too much pressure on kids. You see it. I mean, you know, right? Kids yep. are quitting because they just, they're just not having fun. You get overuse injuries. I mean, all those, all those things. I, I would say, look, I loved basketball. Like, nobody shot more hoops than I did growing up. We, there was an alley behind my house. Every garage had a hoop on it. I would be out there all the time. I, I maximized my basketball talent couldn't have worked any harder did could, nobody wanted it anymore and you know maxing out my potential I was a very average high school basketball player in Minnesota which is known for hockey like that was it right like didn't matter didn't you could have got me a personal trainer didn't matter um so I tell parents like yeah we want all these great things for our kids but let them let them try a lot of things you know they're going to find something they're good at and, if, and they need that they need to just naturally love it, right? That intrinsic motivation. Nobody had to tell me to go lift weights or drink protein shake. I just, 
I loved the process of that. And that's what, to be great as an athlete, you have to have the natural ability first and foremost, you know, LeBron James, he's always, he's going to be a better basketball player than me. You have to, you have to have the natural ability, but then you also have to have that intrinsic motivation where you just love the process of doing it. If the only time a kid is practicing basketball is when he's got practice with his AAU team, you know, he's probably not going to, he's probably not going to go super far because he doesn't just, he or she just doesn't love it. Right. They don't always have a ball in their hand. They're not dribbling in the kitchen, you know, and that's okay. It's not a sin to not love every sport that you're, that you're playing. You know, that's part of just being a kid. There's all these other things that they can benefit from and, 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 and they should, they should play sports, but just in, just in the right balance. It's it's probably a similar message I would say to folks that are trying to figure out what they should do professionally you know, outside of sports, you know, if you hate your job, you know, what kind of passion are you going to bring towards it? Yeah. Are you going to, are you going to hate your job for 30 years so you can become a vice president and then, and then what, right? You're going to be, you know, miserable and angry and probably fat and, you know, and you're not going to make it. Or if you do make it, it's going to, you're going to be like, I did all that for this. Like, it's just not, it's not worth it. Yeah. it's, It's kind of cliche, but yeah, find something you love doing and, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll love every day and you'll, you'll, you'll go far and, and uh, you know, life will, life will be good. Yeah. I feel like today, you know, there's, there's a lot of searching going on and everybody's looking for the formula, right? They're looking for the formula. They're looking for the course, you know, they're looking for the mentorship program, but, but I don't think people spend enough time asking themselves what they want to do and who they want to become really. I, I agree. And I think a lot of that's because how we're raising our kids, right? Like we've, it's, you know, again, it's, it's a lot of sports. We, and then it's, it's every kid should go to college. We've kind of, we kind of put our kids before they can even think, right? Like on, on tracks and we just, and we push, push, push. And, you know, the kid that's been, he's been in this for whatever, 16, 17, 18, he or she is kind of looking around and saying like, yeah, I don't even know what I want. Cause I've never been able to make any decisions or, or, or been able to, tr- to try this or that or and so yeah I mean I think it is and, and the other thing is too I think that's a little bit uh, a, a problem is that um, you know society so much talks about like kids and social media it's like focus on yourself right and so it's, it's all about you and you know personally I believe and I think I think there's research that backs this up right but it's 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 serving other people thinking about other people and and, you know, th- those are the people that have more fulfilling, satisfying lives. And um, we're not, a lot of people think, well, it's about me, 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 and, and I need to go somewhere and I need to do this, 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 versus like, how do I fit into this world? What, what role can I serve uh, others as, as, as well as myself and, and be a part of this, whether it's the world or just my community versus like, hey, it's just, I'm me, me, me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to be a, a superstar, whatever. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Cause I find, I just, I'm, this is something that I'm fascinated with when I spend time thinking we're in this time where, you know, you see so much messaging about being kind and so much messaging about love and, you know, love your neighbor and all, all of this, these, these sayings yet narcissism is at like the highest level. But we all know that yeah. the more we actually give genuinely, the better we feel, the more we help others and they take the attention off ourselves, the better we feel. And the messaging is strong to do that, but people still, they don't do it. They're yeah. searching for happiness in, in, in really vain places oftentimes. Absolutely. Right. And, and, uh, and I'm not certainly not going to blame, I mean, it's part of it's the values of our culture. Part of it yeah. is, is social media and comparing yourself to other people all the time. And, you know, quite frankly, I mean, I'll just be real honest. I think it's, I mean, I think we used to be a, a society that, that upheld and promoted Judeo-Christian values. And, and I don't, and I don't really see that anymore. And, you know, I mean, all, all, all Christian faiths can, can agree on that. You know, you're here to love God and love your neighbor. And um, now I think the message from, from our culture, from secular society is love yourself. Love yourself. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's a quick way to a, to a pretty miserable life. Yeah. And, and it's amazing. You know, there's t-shirts and there's everything that promotes love yourself. And it's like, well, I coach a lot of people, man. I coach a lot of people and the ones that don't make it out alive or, you know, or have the success they want are the ones that just can't, they can't keep the, 
the camera off of themselves. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> that, that's the yeah. key. It's like, you know, you want to know the secret? Matt Burke just shared it. You know, it's like, that's yeah. the secret, you know? I just, I, I read a great, great quote. I'm, I'm a Catholic. Uh, I read a great quote from Pope Francis. He said, life is good when you're happy, but it's better when someone else is happy because of you. Yeah, and I think awesome. that's, I think that's true. And, and, you know, it's one thing to know that. And then it's, it's another thing to do that. And that's where the, that's the trick, you know, knowing, knowing is nothing doing, doing is everything. And every day, uh, every day, that's the trick. Remember that. Don't be so busy that you can't go do something uh, for somebody else. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that. For you, you know, you're coming from a very structured environment in sports. You know, now, what is, it, what is your day-to-day -day now? What are you most passionate about, and how do you structure your day? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> some days are better than others. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm involved in, in a few different, uh, few different businesses, uh, kind of startups, and uh, – so, so it's a grind and, and sometimes you don't know what, what the days hold. It's, it's sometimes it's really hard to just structure a day. You know, I say from, from, from nine to four, I, I work because my kids are at school. And outside of that, I, I try to be a hundred percent available um, to them. But uh, it is, it's, uh, um, you know, with, 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 with startups, it's kind of, it's, it's messy and there is no, there is no blueprint. There is, there's no plan, but it's about, Take, it takes, a couple of things are just really important. Is one taking time to think uh, at the beginning, at the end of each day. You know, beginning of each day, what what do I want to get done today? What do I need to get done? What what do I not have to get done? I think that's the big thing, right? Being so connected, there's so many people always talking to you via text and DMs and whatever emails. Um, what you know, what matters and what doesn't. That's that's the first trick. And then at the end of the day, saying you know. How, how did we do today? Kind of a self, uh, a self assessment. Um, and then, uh, and then I just, I think the other piece is just trying, really trying to, um, when you're, you're on these small teams trying to do big things, it's just, you know, not just, not just what do I need to do, but how can I make, how can I help and make everybody else on, or other people on the team better? Right. Um, you know, you know this and all of us know this, you know, life is a team sport and, uh, a lot of times we'd love to think that, you know, we're the, we're the superstar and we can do it all on our own. But I, I remind myself, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And so it's, uh, it's really about not just, not just my work, but how can I, how can I pour into other people on my team or, or assist them, especially if I'm in a rut and like, I just can't seem to get anything going. It's like, I'm just going to call, you know, my coworker and say, you know, wow, how can I help you? Right. And kind of get a, get some momentum going, going that way. Right. Um, but it's, 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 it's messy, you know, it's, 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 it's a grind. And, um, you know, that's why I never, never really, a coach I had, one of the head coach I had in NFL, he said, don't, he goes, don't, don't judge. You know, you're in a football game, you have 65, 70 plays. And if you have a bad play, don't be, oh, was a, I had that bad play. And, oh, I had that bad play. Like, don't judge. Like, play the play, yep. next play. Like, go in the huddle, next play. Just, just keep lining lining up and just keep, just keep running plays and don't think about what's happened before. Um, and that's, uh, you know, sooner or later, you kind of, you kind of get, get to where you need to be. If you can, if you can endure, you know, a lot of that adversity that we were, that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I guess too, not attaching any negative emotion to things, just run the play. It's going to be good or bad. Run the play, sure. it's gonna be, but be passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. Try, yeah. Try not to and saying, Hey, you know, I mean, if you run a fullback dive, about the best you can hope for is three yards. You yeah. know, not every meeting you have is, is, is a, you know, bomb down the sidelines. A lot, some meetings, the best, it's a fullback dive, right? That's the yeah. best, that's the best I could hope for. It wasn't super exciting, but that's, we'll take it, you know, positive yardage, move on to the next one, move on to the next. Just moving the chains forward. Yeah. 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 No, that's cool, man. And for you, how do you maintain yourself? I mean, you know, you got a lot going on on the family side. You got a lot going on on the business side. What about, you know, you in terms of, you know, your health? I know you went on a fitness journey and all that. And, you know, what do you do yeah. to self-peak every day? You know, I do, I do try to work out most mornings. I'd like to get up early, get, get my, you know, kind of quiet time, spiritual time, get a workout in before, before the kids get up. Um, and then, you know, and that's, you know, anybody who, a lot of people who have kids know what I'm talking about. You get, get your time. Because <laughs> once yeah. the kids are up, 
there is no time. And my kids now, they stay up later than I do at night, some of them too. So that's, that's all I got. But um, I mean, it's, you know, again, it's, it's a priority. Um, I don't normally stay up late. I don't really watch any TV other than just whatever my wife's watching at night. I don't stay up late watching. Other, and so once in a while, I get sucked into a game maybe on yeah. TV. But other than that, it's like, you know, try to go to bed early so I can get up early and, and get that in. And um, I've been doing it so long now. It's really, uh, it's like my wife says, she said, it's not like if you're going to go to the gym tomorrow, like you're already going. And I'm like, yeah, cause that's, that's what I've done my whole life. And that's, and that's the power of habits. And, and that's why, um, you know, right. We are, what we repeatedly do. Yep. And uh, so I think fo football sports really helped me develop some of those good habits, whether it be with, with my health and, and fitness or also with, with my work, just, you know, setting goals and, and, uh, and, and putting the work in to accomplish those. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Did you ever have a desire to coach or go into media announcing and all that? You know? uh, media, no, because <laughs> media, those guys, they just say the same thing over and over. They can't really, they can't really say how it really is. Right. Um, so you wouldn't have lasted uh, that long is what you're saying. No, no, I couldn't have done it. Uh, I, I coach my kids. I love that. As far as coaching higher level, you know, I mean, college, you know this. I mean, coaching is a grind. It's harder to plan, I think. And the, the hours are just ridiculous. And I've always felt like, too, I didn't want to be reliant on somebody else for my livelihood, you know? Like, I think as a coach, that's probably the hardest thing. You know, you coach them hard. You, as a coach, you can do everything right, and the guy might – he might screw it up. I mean, and as a player, you know, you might do everything right, and you might not be able to make that play or make that block or whatever. That's, I, could, I could live with that if it was me. As a coach, I would find that to be very difficult to kind of have, you know, your livelihood and in, in really in somebody else's hands. Um, so I, I really, I have all the respect for coaches in the world because you know this and I know this at, at the professional level and, you know, college level, man, they make a lot of sacrifices, a lot of sacrifices. And yeah, they, they make good money, but and some make great money, but yeah. they earn it, man. They earn it. Their family sacrifice too. And, uh, and they pour, at the end of the day, it's not a job you're doing for a paycheck. You can't, you can't work that hard just for a paycheck. They are pouring themselves out into their players. Um, so I, so I, I don't think I, I say it out of respect, is that I, I, I couldn't do that. I, I, don't, I don't have what, uh, have what it takes. Hey, but, well, you know, that seems to be the common theme. You know, you know who you are, and, and you know what's good for you and, and what's not so good. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, no, nah, that's cool. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you hanging with me, Matt. It's, uh, for sure. it's been good. It's been good. I, I just love hearing the real perspective and just getting in people's heads and, and learning, you know, about their habits and, and how they think. And I think a lot of people benefit from, um, I know you do speaking, so do I, but just the non-typical, motivational speaker that comes in and tells you all the things that you should do in a perfect world or in a perfect classroom or yeah. out of a perfect textbook. But it's like, Hey, I've battled on the field. I battle in business. You know, I battle, I got eight kids. I have to balance it all. I, I just think those are the people that are the best teachers in the world. Yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. And this, this thing about sports too, right? It's real. I mean, in the locker room, it's real. There's no, as a coach, like you're not BSing anybody. You can't, right. You're with teams are together so much. You can't, you can't BS each other. Right. And, um, I agree. Like, as far as we all need encouragement, we should all try to encourage each other. Hopefully people watch and now are, you know, encouraged. And, and I always try to tell people this, it's like, life's supposed to be hard. You know, don't try to make it easy. When you see all these people on social media or somebody on stage talking and they act like they've got it all figured out. I mean, good for them. Maybe they do, but I, I don't. Um, and I think it can be, Sometimes when we feel like if life's hard, you're like, gosh, why, why is it so hard? And that, that becomes like very stressful and can make you unhappy. And it's like, if you change your mindset a little bit, it's, it's supposed to be hard. Yeah. Like marriage is supposed to be hard, right? Raising kids is supposed to be hard. Work is supposed to be. Then it's like, you know, when things are hard, you're not like, oh no, what am I doing wrong? But it's like, no, this is cool. I mean, and it kind of reframes the whole, the whole situation and, yeah. And I think it alleviates a lot of the stress that we put on ourselves, negative stress, right, which can affect performance. And you just kind of go out there and do your thing, you know, and try to be the best husband and the best father and the best business person or 
whatever you do. Um, and, uh, and like, like, it's okay. Like I just, I, that's what I'd like people to know is that like, it's, it's, it's supposed to be hard. If, if, yeah. if it's hard, then good. I think you're doing, you're doing it right. You're struggling. Um, the, the, the trick is to try to try to struggle, struggle joyfully you know, <laughs> and not let, uh, not, not, not let the grind get you. Or as, as one of my college coaches used to say, don't let the bastards get you down. Yeah. Um, and that's just keep, you keep going. And that's, and to me, that's, that's success, right? If you just, if you can keep going, um, no matter what happens, that's, that's success in, in, in any endeavor. No, I love that. So I got, I have one last question. I call it the becoming a champion show. Cause I say, we're all on a journey to become champions. You know, yeah. I, I have a major league baseball world series ring. You have one in the NFL, but being a champion is more than a ring. So I ask, what does the word champion mean to you? Yeah. Awesome question. Uh, you know, I think, be, I think being a champion is just always doing the, the, the best you can with what you have, you know, yeah. in, in, in that circumstance. I mean, to me, that's what, that's what, that's what champions do. And, you know, I was, you won the world series. I won a super bowl. I mean, you know, I mean the super bowl, I won this is, it came down to a 50, 50 ball in the quarter of the end zone. They threw a fade route on fourth down. If he catches it, they win. If our DB knocks it down, we won. A lot of people thought it might've been pass interference. It was a no call. The ball fell incomplete. We won. We really easily could have been on the other side. You know, we could have yeah. lost that game and then we're not super bowl champions i mean does that make any sense you know one play one play that i wasn't even on the field for am i supposed to feel differently about myself and so to me that's what a champion is it's 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 doing the best you can with what you have in in any situation and uh you know kind of the results don't always don't always tell that story but but you know like you know you always know deep down when you, when you look in the mirror you know if you if you did the best you could and yep. that's it oh, i love that if you know you did your best you're a champion that's why you know, I always, I always wear this shirt. It's my Superman shirt, but it's, it's, <laughs> it, you know, if you, if, if you let yourself know that, you know, and you do the work to match you, you are. Yeah. Agreed. Well, Agreed. that's, that's awesome, man. Matt, thanks so much for, for hanging. My yeah, pleasure, Dana. Seriously. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, you hanging and, and shooting us straight.